In the studio now we have Senator uh, Mutula Kilonzo Jr. of Makweni County. Live from Kisumu, who will be joining us is Governor Weekly for Paranya of Kakamega. And I'll start with you, Senator. First, your reaction and response to what the governor said demanding. Uh, my, uh, it's, it's a strange, uh, very strange um, uh, statement, uh, and extremely disingenuous because the the I didn't I don't understand whether they are seeking for legal amendments of the law, or whether they are saying they are equivalent to the president uh, mm -hmm. in terms of Article 143. Mm -hmm. If that is the case, then obviously they have not read the constitution well, right? Because the immunity the president enjoys under Article 143 of the constitution. That immunity, Hussein, is not enjoyed by his deputy president. It's exclusive to him being the head of state and head of government mm -hmm. and being the symbol of sovereignty and the nation. Right. And that, although the, the, the immunity also has a caveat uh, that is not protected by a lot of office for crimes that we, we may have signed in on international treaties. Now, what surprises me about governors is that for us who are in the Senate, this, this has come after a long struggle. The struggle first was that you cannot summon a governor, governor in the committee because because yeah. because they are like a president. The second one was that they even went to court and to get an interpretation of Article 125 uh, to the extent that uh, they argued and wrongly, and the court found so. And I was happy that any the word any person under Article 125 mm -hmm. does not include a governor, and they should not be summoned. The, the court found otherwise. So this is a continuation of what I call the soap opera of it wasn't me. <laughs> that is, it's not me. It's not me who should be answerable. What they forget is that the constitution they signed to uphold and respect and promote on oath uh, under Article 179 refers to them in a very, very nice language called Chief Executive Officer, right. CEO. And the Deputy Governor is a Deputy CEO, CEO of, the, of the, county. the county. What that means is that, strictly speaking, they are answerable like any other CEO uh, of a corporation. When it came to Kenya Airways, we didn't ask the flight attendants, why is Kenya Airways uh, having problems? We asked the CEO. When any Prastato and the people who have been charged recently, we didn't ask them, why were the procurement officers? The CEOs of KPLC are answering for questions of their institutions. They should not equate themselves to the presidency. But no. When it uh, comes please. to the No, no, no. Please, we can't even have that argument. <laughs> okay. they, are, they are not, they will never be, that is not the architecture of the constitution. He said, uh, Governor uh, Nanok of um, uh, Turkana County, of course, the COG chair, uh, that, I'm trying to clarify this, that the prosecution should only target county executives and accountants and not governors. I don't know how you respond to that. Because, I mean, to what extent should they be answerable, for example? What, what the governor Nanok didn't tell you, and what I'm going to tell your viewers today, mm. is that the, the legislation that governs the management of finance in the country at national and county level is called Public Finance Management Act. Under Section 1022, the only section where you find that in matters of public finance at counties, the county executive committee has collective responsibility on matters finance. Who is the chair of the county executive committee? It's called the governor. So there's no way they can run away from that? They can't. Do we have uh, a governor of Paranya yet? Okay, we still don't have uh, Governor Paranya. Yes. Of course, and the other thing they say Andrew, that you, you, they, you, they, you, Yes, sir. You, you chose go Governor Paranya well. Because, <laughs> because he refused and he actually uh, went to court. He never even appeared before a Senate Two came. cases, Oparanya exactly. 1 and 2. And, and I hope to get him. We really hope we'll get him tonight. Yes. So, I mean, they are, they are saying they are aware that security agencies will target more governors in the coming weeks. And that is something uh, I hope Oparanya will respond to tonight. I don't know if it's about individual culpability or what they would want to close ranks to support somebody, yet ultimately it's about the individual and his or her guilt or otherwise. It's not a corporate crime. The COG, the Council of Governors, is not, is not a, a, a union for purposes of trade unionism, for purposes of covering crime. So if the Council of Governors is not a trial, will never be a trial. And let me tell you, we must tell the country, the fact that Oparanya has been arrested does not mean 47, uh, 46 other governors will be, will be arrested. The fact that um, he has been arrested also doesn't mean that the rest of them have been found uh, to be, will f they will be found with their hands in the cookie jar. But let me tell you, in fact, my own uh, conviction is that Governor Oparanya is at the lowest, the lowest point. There are some of them, once they are arrested, it will be in billions of shillings. And this action must be taken. We must restore sanity in county governments. We, we must insist 
we did not devolve corruption. We did not devolve theft. We did not devolve pilferage of funds. That we must insist. If we don't insist, the, the, the people who and the people who are fighting devolution just point to, gov to the wastage of funds and they say, what was the point of having county governments if they've un ended up with the same bad habits mm -hmm. that you see at national level? So in terms of accountability, heads must roll. We must have accountability. If governors think their country, and I, I, I must tell you, and because I'm, I'm on air and viewers are listening, right. the governors called me for the induction program. And one of the questions they asked me, and I will not tell you who asked me, is that what do we do with our county executives of finance? I said, what do you mean? He's an appointee of the governor and approved by the assembly. In the county executive, Hussein, there's only one person who is elected and comes with a deputy governor. And that is the person who is answerable to the public. The county executive committee uh, member in charge of finances work is to present reports and account to the county assembly. The ultimate responsibility must be the governor's. Okay, mm. I'll give you an example, because this is what they're saying. Um, uh, a county executive has been found to have committed some fraud. Yes. Okay. Should a governor take responsibility for that? Or should he or she be held responsible for that? For the, for, that's why, uh, by the way, criminal actions are personal. Uh, so uh, to that extent, you, ca you have to be able to demonstrate that there is a, a link, as we call it a, a, a chain of evidence okay. that links the governor to the corruption or the fraud alleged on any person, whether it's a, a procurement officer or a, a sweeper, it doesn't matter. There must be a chain of evidence. And therefore, the, in terms of us answering the questions as to how these funds were pilfered, there's a person who ultimately answer the question. But if you can draw a chain that will link the governor as the chief executive officer to the fraud, then he's answerable. Two, how governors are delinking themselves from financial transactions is something I don't understand. Why? Why would you say that? Because mm -hmm. I've just pointed to you a section that they have collective responsibility. It simply means that the county executive member of, the, of any government is required every quarter to submit a report to the controller of budget and the assembly. It is assumed legally, Hussein, mm -hmm. that that county executive member, by the time he's presenting that report, that is not report of the county executive. It is the report of the county government. Which means, therefore, that in terms of expenditure of a county, the county government, the deputy governor, and everybody sitting in the county executive committee would know about financial transactions. So you actually cannot escape liability by saying, I was in Dubai when this payment was made. I was traveling. I was in Russia. No way. You must be answerable for those actions because it is assumed that it was sanctioned at the county executive committee. That's why I pointed that section.